Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's fight week, EFC 80s on the way. Myself and Warren King, and we've got the mighty Gareth McLennan on the phone. Welcome to the show, man. How's it, bud? Thanks for having me. Fantastic. How's things going, Gareth? Yeah, going well, eh? Um, lost a lot of preparation now, but I'm busy concentrating on the, the weight cut, which seems to be going quite well, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, otherwise, uh, a few sessions uh, during, during the course of the week, just to keep myself sharp and uh, make sure the blades are 100% uh, ready to strike. And uh, yeah, that's Saturday night we're back. Fantastic, man. Um, yeah, j- just to, to go obviously where, where this part started with uh, being a coach on the fighter, it's, it's obviously a, a long-winded build-up. Do you feel like any sort of exhaustion in the, you know, being a coach, going through the whole show, then having to watch the show, relive everything, and then now get ready for the fight? Yeah, look, I mean, we've really had to be smart um, and uh, really need to really needed to manage myself through through this course I mean we'd already started training last year already fight was meant to be in March but moved out to now until to the end of this this month so you know um, what we'd originally set up to do we had to slow down change direction a little bit but I, I had a good team around me you know I brought on a high performance coach uh, in Wayne Taylor and uh He's, he's a big name in the rugby, rugby circles, and he's managed that whole process. He's been really good at making sure that um, I don't go out too fast, and you know I stay within my lane. And you know he's really made sure that uh, I peak at the right time. So uh, I'm really happy with the job that he's done. Um, it could have it could have gone either way. I think the old me would have been 100 miles an hour and, and would have broken at some stage, um, and then had to rebuild. But you know, we've kept our, our pedal at uh, at 60 to 70 percent most of the way, and just ramped it up closer to the fight. And now I feel like I'm I'm sure to you. Fantastic, man. Uh, Gareth, it's Warren. How are you? All right, and you, bud. Good, good. So, um, your your last fight camp uh, for your last fight in the UFC. You were out in New Zealand, and then obviously this fight camp. You here in South Africa, but your first fight camp locally outside of the FFM realm. Um, what what camp have you put together around you, barring obviously uh, the strength and conditioning which you've just uh, spoken about now? Um, we see you've been training a lot of the PR. Have you recruited Neil back on the team, kind of with your preparation in that? So yeah, you know, Neil's always been around. He's uh, he's uh, he's been a good just coach to me. You know, he brought me into that uh, into that realm, and he was really solid in terms of my growth. Um, obviously, you know, once I, I left the FFM group, you know, I needed to make sure that that was uh, kept, um, kept, or well, I had a watchful eye over it. And, uh, you know, that, with the fact that I started with him, I'd always got good gains out of him. Um, and uh, as a coach, he'd always been solid and, and a good cornerman. Um, so I brought him on to, to run as, to be the head coach for, for this, this camp. Um, he, he was just really good with my mindset round, round certain fights that, um, when I needed him, and uh, I saw that as a big asset going forward. I pull on a lot, a lot of different other coaches as well, um, which have picked up uh, various roles in certain areas. And uh, it was a good combination. I needed to find guys because they had not worked with each other before, were able to easily gel with each other, and uh, that we could get the product that we needed at the end of the day. Um, you know, I think coaches are. are are a massive, um, massive part of what we need to do as as fighters. Um, you know, unfortunately, we do lack um, high level coaches in in South Africa. You know, there's only a few guys. So I just needed to put together a really smart group. I just got guys who had been in their industries for a very long time, and uh, you know, had had good names, and um, also understood the MMA world. Yeah. Um, and uh, you yeah, know, we had a, we had a good package. You know, I used my experience as well from from traveling and. And what I'd learned to to put into that as well, and yeah, look, I think we're all extremely happy with what we've come out with. Brilliant, brilliant. And um, obviously, it's been uh, it's been quite a while since you've been in the in the octagon or the hexagon, and um, I think you're, you're just over two years now. Um, I know Dominic Cruz says ring rust doesn't exist. Uh, do you feel that this time away has given you what you needed to perform at a high level? I mean, you know, some guys get fatigued at this continuous three fights a year type of pace do you feel like this two years out has been really powerful for you or would you have liked to have gotten there earlier no look i mean when i left um, i was saying in an interview earlier on 
that when I left, um, you know, I was really leaving. I, I, at the end of that, the UFC was kind of me saying, okay, I'm done now, you know. Yeah. I pushed so hard and I'd literally broken myself uh, to the point where I didn't enjoy the space anymore. I didn't want to be there. Um, I didn't really have any desire to want to compete anymore. Um, and I thought it was a good time to really, um, you know, step away and uh, start looking at other opportunities. I'd had moved on quite a little bit. I mean, I was 35 at that stage as well. So, you know, I was also thinking to myself, you know, I'd had a good, I'd had a good career and it was maybe time to look at uh, hanging up the gloves. But still, there was certain doubts and questions I needed to ask. So it wasn't 100% of a decision. The time away for me has been the best thing that I could ever have done for myself. It's really allowed my body time to heal, my mind time to refresh itself. And then I also just got an opportunity to do MMA as a as a as a as a normal person and not as a fighter. Yeah. And I really found this incredible passion for for uh, MMA like I had had in the beginning and and taking me on this martial arts journey. And uh, and of course, you know that fire inside of me, that competitive fire, just kept on building and building and building and building. And you know, once I realised that I didn't lose much, in fact, that I didn't lose anything, I had progressed in my in my abilities. You know, I really felt like it was time to go back and, and see see where I was and, and what I was capable of and was I capable of uh, having a good crack at it. Um, you know, the, the opportunity came along with UFC and I, and I jumped at it because I thought it was a good space. And, you know, being at home and not having to travel and not having to go and do camps overseas, I could be in my own environment and be comfortable, um, was, was, was an amazing opportunity. Um, and I'm super excited, you know. Uh, I'm really excited to be fighting in front of the South African fans again. It's just a, it's a, it's a blessing uh, for me that I get the opportunity to do something that I love so much, and uh, I get to do it one more time. You know, really? not so, a lot of people can can say that. You know, that not a lot of opportunity to leave and then get a good opportunity to come back. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm not getting the vibe yet that it's just one more fight. Uh, you, you're back for a, for a couple of fights. <laughs> Look, no pressure. I haven't put any pressure on myself. I haven't said that I I need to fight a certain amount of times. I um, I never felt like I needed to be in a certain direction. There's no, there was no drive to say, oh, I needed to be champion again, or I needed to make it back to the UFC, or I needed to do this or that. I just said I wanted to fight. I wanted to enjoy that moment and enjoy that space. Um, and where it goes, I don't know. I had a long chat with my pastor about it and saying, you know, how, how do I know when it's time? How do I know when it's time to really give up? Or when, how do I know when it's time to say goodbye? And he just said to me, you'll know, you know, when you're in there, in that moment, you'll know that it's, that it, that it's done or, or what's not. So for me, it's an open book right now. Uh, I'm excited about what's in front of me. I'm excited about this opportunity with, uh, with EFC. I think that Brennan Azar is an incredible opponent that a lot of people don't give a lot of credit to. And uh, I think he's been so successful because people have overlooked him every time. He likes that underdog status. He likes to fight. Um, I think if we have a look at this, at the situation that he in, that we're in, he's probably the guy that uh, is 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 on it. He's the guy that's been fighting. He's the guy that fought for his opportunity for the title. He's the rightfully number one contender in in the, in the EFC. Um, he earned that right. I, I'm just somebody who's coming back. He's been given an opportunity for the things that I did before. And, uh, you know, I have to grab it with both hands. I feel like I've, I've worked the best that I've ever done a, as a fighter. I've been smarter, more intelligent um, in, in the way that I've prepared myself. And I feel like my mind just meets my body at the moment and and, uh, and my emotions. And I, I'm really excited to see what I'm capable I, I really, I really feel I'm free just to do what I want to do. I don't. Yeah, as soon as I put an expectation on it and I, I really put a stamp next to it and said I have to do this, I think that's where the pressure comes. Yeah. I'm under no pressure. I, I'm excited. I'm a fighter at heart, you know what I mean? That's that's why I got into the sport, uh, uh, because that's just a natural thing that runs through my veins. And I get to do that yeah. um, I, and have fun and doing it at the same time. Brilliant, man. Fantastic. <clears throat> Sorry, Gareth, just you alluded to the fact that it's been quite a quite a long narrative in, in, in this fight with yourself and Brendan Lazar. Um, a lot of people are kind of counting him out on paper, saying, you know, like he's only 2-0 in the EFC. 
he went through the fighter um, you know a guy like yourself who's been around since since forever basically gone to the UFC and stuff how, how, do you how do you prepare for that mentally obviously keep having people throw that narrative down your throat to kind of say it's going to be a walkover for you I mean you've obviously um, accepted the fact that it's going to be a hard fight and he's unorthodox and being overlooked is actually one of his strengths so so how do you prepare for that mentally when everyone keeps throwing that narrative at you well, the thing is, if I allow people to talk into my mind and into my space, then you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow that to manifest, and it's gonna become, it's gonna become a factor. You know, I, I, I put boundaries into what people can say uh, and what people can tell me. I know what's in front of me, um, and I've been doing this a very, very long time. I've seen the best fighters in the world lose against nobodies. I've seen um, the best and the best rise to the top and fall very hard. Uh, the sport is not a, a sport of uh, of people who stay there on top for too long. There's very few people in the world that can can hold that high standard um, in MMA. There's one thing in MMA you are going to lose at some stage, and uh, it, it can happen at it. Um, I really just looked at this fight and I said, how do I want to prepare? I prepared as if I was fighting the best fighter in the UFC. I, I was preparing like I would always prepare with the same mindset and the same work ethic that I was fighting in a UFC fight. So uh, I, I, I've I've put Brendan on this pedestal as he's one of the best fighters in the world and I need to go out and beat him. And for, for, for me to beat him on the night, I need to be the best soldier player that could be. And that means mentally, physically, and emotionally, and spiritually, I just need to be in the right space. And that's what I work towards. And uh, when that clicks together on the night, I know what I'm capable of. I've done it many times before. Um, I just need to make sure that it all aligns on, on Saturday. Perfect, man. Um, obviously, Gareth, it's, it's been a long time since South African fans have seen you in there. Um, so just an opportunity for one last message for those people that are going to be watching you fight come Saturday night. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to, to everybody that's been involved in, in, in MMA and uh, in my journey. You know, it's been a long journey. Um, I've had the most incredible experiences in the sport. I've had this most, the most incredible experiences outside the sport. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to, to really do things I would never have expected um, in a lifetime. Um, if you'd asked me 15 years ago, this is where you're going to be, I would have told you you've been crazy. Um, I thank every single person that has stood by me, that has supported me uh, through my journey, through the hard times uh, and the good times. You know, it hasn't always been, it hasn't always been rock starish for, for Soldier Boy. He's, he's had moments in, in his career where it hasn't been. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have always given me confidence, always told me, um, how much I've done and how, many, how much I've inspired and those, are, those have been very important to me over the last two years and keeping myself focused and, and pulling myself back to the stage um, you know I've had to go through a lot to get back to the space where I was willing to climb back in there again you know I, like I said before I was, I was done and I was, and I was walking away and uh, uh, those people that have constantly you know just the, the, the stops in the street to say you know what thank you or well done or you're amazing those things inspired me they inspired me to want to be in there again they inspired me to want to show people what Soldier Boy was capable of they've inspired me to inspire people again um, you know I, I really feel that South African MMA is just at this point that it really uh, it needs it needs to have um, an, some more great moments for it to continue to rise and to grow so that the youngsters coming through can uh, can go on and, and bring us world titles um you know, I get my opportunity to, to put myself once again in, in, in the history books, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to leave my legacy and my stamp on South African MMA. And when I, when I say goodbye, you know, I want people to be proud of the things that I've done. Awesome, man. I think that anything else, Warren? No. Cool. Fantastic, Gareth. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we just want to wish you the best of luck with the weight cut and the rest of the bit that's left until Saturday night. And thanks again, man. Thanks, thanks a lot, guys, and thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, man. Yeah. Cheers, Gareth. Ciao, man. Cheers, Bye. Bye. That's so crazy. No, that is crazy. I mean, Fantastic. that, that Oaks fighting Yoel. In, in Joe Merrill. Also, also keen <laughs> Yoel, 27 million, baby. <laughs> Yo, I really hope his next fight's also red. What? Red panty night. Red panty night. Oh, okay. Good one. Good one, Rock. Cool, Rock. <laughs> Anyways, that was uh, Gareth Soldier Boy McClellan. Um, yeah. We're back. What's happening, gentlemen? Nothing much. Just uh, training, working, mm. drinking coffee. Living the dream. Living the dream. 
it's fight week are you actually pumped the United's Rock uh, pitched up for two two in a row in a row, in a row. <laughs> record breaker <laughs> <laughs> my goodness we might keep him on a little bit longer now. yeah yeah he's we buying himself some time we're gonna add on like one more responsibility a week <laughs> <laughs> the, pro- the problem is you, only, you can only do five responsibilities you add one he's gonna drop the other one well, listen, Oh, well then. Well, you haven't taken well it yet. Uh. Oh. <laughs> if he doesn't take that selfie, he's fired. <laughs> he's fired. <laughs> anyway, fight week. Are you guys pumped? Oh, very pumped. I, I was saying to the guys today at training that um, the, like this break has actually been fantastic. You know, everyone's like quite juiced up for the... Like, not juiced up, but... <laughs> 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 hey, Bajan. <laughs> mm, here um, we go. <laughs> Everyone's pumped up for the... Five the minutes and we're into a bye, Ginger. <laughs> 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 um, everyone's pretty pumped up for the, <laughs> <laughs> for the, for the um, event this weekend. Um, you, know, you know what it is? Like, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So we... Um, yeah, we're all looking forward to it. And it's a pretty good card. Yeah, it's quite a strange one because like, I was like, nah, nah, nah. I think you kind of like... you forget about that it's coming kind of thing mm. and then it arrives and you're like oh shit it's fight week and then you start going through like I mean I know obviously people are pumped to see Soldier Boy back who we just yeah. spoke to I think that's I'm quite intrigued to see the evolution where he's at I'm super intrigued to see how Brendan Lazar comes out for that fight but we're going to get into the fights yeah. and then I think like the, the funny thing w- with cards like this because it's been TF2 and it's been this long build up um, the return of Soldier Boy. Everyone's kind of forgotten about Luke Michaels, Conrad. Conrad, Conrad you know what I mean. And that there's so much, and you know, you know what? And, and, and props to to Conrad. And I think Luke as well. Like every fight they have, they create this like personalized animosity, which just gets people so jacked up. It's not you know like I eventually do get over it, but yeah, th- they're two guys that are quite good at it. And yeah, definitely. It's got people jacked up about that fight. Biogen jacked up. I honestly thought one of them were going to hit each other prior to getting to fight night. <laughs> uh, we still got time. I mean, there's still way to go. So. <laughs> I mean, weren't you guys at the last press conference? Are you throwing shade or are you asking a question? I, I, I'm the, so confused right this now. This guy really wants to get kicked out of here. <laughs> he really wants to get kicked out of here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just on a, just a note on that, uh, Warren mentioned the Wayans. Just so you know, and I know people don't ask me a thousand questions, the Wayans are not going to be televised. That was what came through and, today. And they're not going to be at the PR. They're going to be at 10 a.m. Carnival City. I think they're just doing the early Wayans and that's it. I don't think there's going to be a ceremonial way. That's the way I understand it. I think it's cool. I mean, like how much viewership do you get from a uh, Wayans? Yeah, it seems like a lot of... It's a cool thing. I, I, this is, I'm, I'm a sucker for Wayne's, bro. I, I love me a Wayne. I don't know why. I'm just so addicted to it. Like, I love watching I, Wayne's. I think I, it just, like, gets me into the mood. I thought the Wayne's were awesome when you were, like, dehydrated, agitated, <laughs> miserable. You get on there. You see your opponent properly for the first time. Like, that's when it was still... Yeah. Now, it's just, like, you're just going through the motions. You know, you've, we've seen each other already. We've done our Wayne's already. We rehydrated already. Yeah. Now we've come back a couple of hours later. We're going to step on the scale. Most folks don't even take their shirts off anymore. Or, are getting on or with they their wear 25 pieces of clothing. Yeah, and then you have to wait fucking 10 minutes for them to take it off. Um, but I mean, it's, it's definitely it's lot. fucking worst. I hate it. I'm like, bro, you, where did you think you were going? <laughs> <laughs> you knew what you were going to do. You're going to take clothes off. So why are you wearing everything possible just it's like crazy it's like if you go to the beach and you walk and you walk on with a hoodie and a <laughs> shirt and two pairs of pants and spats and fuck it drives me crazy and you know, it's that that like uh, background music for the EFC and it's just, it's just like like an awkward silence just with that song repeating itself in the background while some dude takes off jacket beanie t-shirt shorts pants socks shoes I'm like gee was, you know the crazy thing is, is that um, it was, that was always interesting when you had the real Wayans yeah. live because Oaks were trying to take off pants and then you could really see who was properly damaged from the weight cut because Oaks <laughs> were like falling over, holding onto their coach, like they couldn't get their, their pants off. Um, but now it's like, fuck, what, what are we doing? Yeah, now? what are we doing? 
<laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, man. It's no, I think we. But I'm, anyway, I'm pumped. So fight weeks happening. Wayne's are not going to be televised. Rourke's going to be there, so he's going to be sending us stuff. So it's all cool. Don't worry. Rourke says he's got everybody covered. Mm-hmm. Don't you worry. <laughs> I was going to go as well, but then. Um, <laughs> I was yep. gonna I was gonna go as well until they said uh, Brackpan and I was like mm. Yeah. That's a drive to watch people weigh in, bro. Especially if it's just gonna be that that early sort of weighing, you know, it's randomly guys hitting the scale. Yeah. It'll be cool if they set it up like um like the UFC does early weighing, you know, got like that little backdrop and they call Oaks in and they yeah, come yeah. in and, and they like media, I, I, they got chairs for the media and yeah. Go and like that would be cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe they'll do that. I mean Maybe. they didn't say anything. They didn't even ask if you come in, they were just like 10 a.m. It's not going to be televised. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. What's um, on the magic paper today, bro? Yo, I got paper. I got paper for days today. Two, so much happening this last weekend, three, eh? Four. Five. We went five so today. So, in a thesis here. Five today. Five pages today. It's color coded as well. <laughs> <laughs> it is, too. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Here we go. He's done. Yeah, something, oh, wow. something that's like a Rourke's crucial, gonna, crucial gonna, piece of your chair. Rock's going to take a three meter drop behind there. Oh, we can only hope that chair breaks. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that you fall down <laughs> to your imminent death, but <laughs> if you just death. fall like down, that'll be awesome. The admin that will be involved. If it makes one that. more noise, I'm putting my camera on my phone. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> oh, the type of admin we'd have to go through though, if you did fall and die. <laughs> 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 yeah, please don't. Uh, um, Send your uh, producer resume through. <laughs> yeah, we might, be, we might just have a spot opening up. <laughs> we had a lot of uh, African-born fighters in action this past weekend. Not for the first time, as you research. This guy. No, no, this past weekend. I'm talking about guys who had who fought. So we had Gunther get back to winning ways in Did Singapore. You guys, you guys watched the fight? Yeah, yeah. I was watching it. Jeez, man, I was I was speaking to some of the guys um, like Trestle and that that you know that know a little bit more than than we do about. It. No one seems to know where Gunther is, where he's training. What? I'm guessing it's not in South Africa. Well, I saw I saw he had a uh, Roderick that that judo guy, you know the judo guy, Roderick Kuku and whatever. I'm yeah. sure that that was the guy that was in his corner. Yeah, yeah. And he's uh, South African based Congolese judoka. Uh, uh, well, but dude, his his stand up looks super impressive to me. You know what I mean? Not look. Uh, let's specify. <laughs> not <laughs> slow the bus. You know, not like uh, elitist level, but it looked impressive, man. And he was he was super confident with his stand up. You know what I mean? Like the way he was engaging. Um, he was throwing a left high kick, which eventually w- w- was what won him the yeah. fight. But he was throwing that thing like often from 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 the get go. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just looked like a completely different fighter, which was crazy to see. Super impressive, man. So is he not with Kat anymore? At, uh, look, uh, I don't know, but I don't think so. He's, I don't think he's yeah. I think he's in France or, or, or staying in Asia somewhere and he's training there. Makes sense. I mean, I, kn- I know a lot of guys who sign with one generally get based in Singapore yeah. and they utilize yeah. it. I think, Evolve. I think Evolve's free and open to one fighters, if okay. I'm not mistaken. But I don't know. It's, uh, it's a good question. Maybe we should speak to someone and find out yeah um, look <laughs> I, I did have a contact that was knows. with him uh, Raisin or whatever his name is was communicating with back and forth we actually were going to set up an interview with Gunther but it just went quiet again so I don't think he's come back to be honest I, I think that's the vibe I get Evolve you might be right that yeah. might be where <coughs> he is but yeah if you guys haven't seen it um, jump onto YouTube that's the cool yeah. thing about one you can go relive all of that and I think he was the second fight on that card so if you really want to know, send me a message somewhere. I'll, I'll send you the link. Um, it's it's also the, also the app is amazing. World of Heroes series or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's the recent one. It's the One Warrior series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Super cool, and yeah. it's cool. You can go check that fight out. Yeah, man, it was. I was super impressed. I was so happy to see. I mean, Gunther's got quite a funny story. Like we still don't really know the truth, um, but 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 glad to see him excelling. It was, mm. it was a nice. It's always fight. good to see. Guys. I think that's a kind of fight that's gonna start to like really get get a bit of traction for him yeah overseas. but that warrior series is quite peculiar in the sense that it's a very small yeah. kickboxing ring yeah it's not a, so like when they when they do one events uh and they have like the international grand prix with all the world's best kickboxes it's, it's actually a very big kickboxing ring yeah 
and that MMA fights in it as well. But the Warrior series is a very small ring. Uh, there's not really m- anywhere to go. It kind of forces you to be quite confrontational. I mean, Gunther, the guy that Gunther was fighting, uh, had a wrestling background, and he seemed to be able to stuff the takedowns in that. But I mean, I mean, it was only a couple of steps, and they always seemed like they were on the ropes. Yeah. You know? So it's a bit of a uh, weird, weird. You okay there, boy? You still with us? Why are you crying, Rob? <laughs> yeah. What are you crying about? Uh, holding a yawn. You, hold <laughs> you can yawn, dude. No one can see you, Charlie. You can <laughs> yawn as much as you want. <laughs> Crazy. Sorry. But just, just you, you mentioned the ring. H- how different is, is that setup if, if you've, like, obviously spent most of your MMA career in a cage? Well, it's quite different because, I mean, anytime you clinch up against the cage uh, in a traditional hexagon or octagon, it's like a third post almost yeah. you know so you're not going to go any further than the cage so a lot of guys can use that in offensive or defensive wrestling sure whereas the problem with the ring is that it's very easy to slip through those ropes so your whole uh, cage cage wrestling or war wrestling game is very different and you see very little clinch against the against the ropes uh, when they when they have these events in the in the ring so it's it becomes more about freestyle wrestling and kickboxing rather than uh, more MMA style wrestling. Okay. Um, Do you think that's done like by design by one? They definitely. They don't really want to like kill off the. Definitely. They want to kill off like the cage sort of wrestling. Definitely. I I think the reason they obviously have the small ring there is they they want these guys to really push the pace and okay. they want to see some something exciting. Um, but Joe, yeah, I, I think it also lends itself nicely. Uh, to the more traditional martial arts fans mm-hmm. or combat sport fans that are still a little bit maybe anti the cage element of mixed martial arts, you know, it's cage fighting. Yeah. So I think um, like the traditional Asian community can probably process that and, and get on board easier with the fact that it's in a ring. But they do they do have events in in hundred percent, hundred percent. But yeah, uh, I'm with you. It's very interesting. I was actually thinking about it when I was watching that fight. I was like, you, you can see like in, in, in the movement and stuff like that, it's, there's not that much space. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the way guys are trying to cut the ring and stuff like that is very different, you know, as opposed to having all of the space in the yeah. hexagon. Um, and just thinking about those differences you've got to have in your mind and your game plan. I mean, I mean especially for a guy like Gunther, well, we saw the last time he, he was quite like, I want to say wrestling heavy, but like almost like a kind of grappling like, tie you out kind of style they were in a different ring for his first fight though eh? I think it was the same is it I'm pretty sure yeah it was very yeah. very similar yeah okay anyway and, and uh, we're, we're talking about African fighters my yeah. boy France from Lambo yeah, with a slick with the little money choke slick little guillotine mm. modified guillotine choke there yeah I'm I'm, I'm, I'm glad mm. for him man he's he's had a hell of a story hell of a road um, is he out of brave now yeah, he's so his his last fight when he came here when he fought for Brave that was the end of his contract. Oh, okay, and he had he had been approached by Bellator already, um, so he had signed the deal, awesome. worked out his contract, That's and got move. out of there. It's a good move. Yeah, good for him, man. Um, Look, he was he was getting looked after at Brave, but uh, um, you know he, he lost that title fight. I think that was the second time he had lost to I think it's Stephen Lerman. Yeah, yeah, the second time he had lost him. So I think like for him is like, well, what do I do now? You know, go back, start again, yeah. build it up. It's very difficult to get the third fight today. Yeah. yeah. So it was a smart move for him, man. And he, I mean, he's fighting in Europe. Yeah. You know, he's got teammates, he's got friends around, which is always cool. Well, on that card, he had two teammates on that yeah. card with uh, Gallagher and mm. Ward. Um, yeah, it was a great performance. I mean, quick. Wasn't wasn't much to really talk about besides really slick. Well, there's something we have to talk about. It was another one of his teammates, which <coughs> was Artem Lobov. Oh, f- <laughs> fuck. The goat. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Just want to say I t- told you so. Oh, my goodness. That was that was a horrendous fight. That was a horrendous fight. But um, I wasn't wrong. No, you went. You went. You went. If you should have listened to our oh, better house. I told you guys. Pink slips on Artem, boy. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm not bought on this uh, Ben like, little FC. I, there's two things. I, I'm, I, I don't really enjoy watching it, number yeah. one. And number two, I find that uh, president or CEO, or whatever you want to call him, very skeezy. And just the way they're marketing is just like really. Uh, so, so, so here's the thing: like, pugilist boxing is is probably the purest form of combat sport and, and one of the longest. You know, obviously, barring like wrestling and things like that. 
So, you know, bare knuckle is so taboo as it is. You need it more to be as traditional as possible aimed at. You see, he's trying to get like this shock factor, gore effect, and he wants people to just beat each other. And I don't think that's the right no, approach. No, well, that's I, my issue. Exactly. With I think the longevity like that is... It, it's going to be suspect, you know what yeah. I mean? Like if it was more pugilist based, purist sort of kind of like, you know, this is the traditional combat, the way boxing was, was created and stuff like that. And yeah. you angled it like that, you didn't have guys spitting at each other and going mull. Yeah. You know what I mean? Look, make no mistake, the, the sold probably sold more than the UFC because of all of these things with the build up and probably made them quite a lot of money. But I don't see the longevity in that you know? it, it takes no. a special it's a special scenario between Paulie and, and, and Artem you know what I mean that yeah. they kind of created themselves you're not going to get that again in the bare knuckle setting so well you're going to really struggle to the, the only other thing that's probably going to sell more is if they somehow convince firstly uh, Rumble Johnson to fight and then somehow convince some other person on planet earth to get in there with him it's crazy and the crazy thing is he works security <laughs> for them like well, like what's going on around here yeah I, yeah i don't know what's going on here. um look, the thing I don't, I don't like um about the promotion is that they make all these bold claims the most talked mm. about uh combat sports event <laughs> of the year it's um uh he made some statements about how it's like the best part of mma and uh, taking out all the work like the, the negative parts of mma and then i was like hold on like 80 percent of your fight card is X washed up MMA fighters <laughs> and then you, the other 20% is washed up boxers like it's only going to become and there's 1% that's a former gay porn star oh yeah <laughs> Cochran he actually want to he want to he, he like beat the rubbish out of Lieben yeah. bro that was that was hectic do you guys see Brennan Sharp's rant on no no it was an epic the funniest thing ever oh then they see if we had the Chromecast we could have googled the pictures that is why <laughs> Rourke is on thin ass. <laughs> All he had to do was set this thing up and then... I didn't know we had it until I walked in here. Did you not tell us like five days ago we got Chromecast? <laughs> we, we and he, and he, even, he even says, Rourke, if you want, you can, you can stream from, uh, from a laptop or cell phone. He li literally told you that. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think it's going to become like the shitting on rock show. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think I only start taking this bare knuckle thing seriously was when is when athletes start preparing as full time bare knuckle mm. athletes. How you know? do you prepare? What do you do? That? Go it's JVD. Bo just, it's boxing. Get some glass on your hands. And it's, it's boxing without gloves. You know, it's yeah. a, I saw that they they getting they quite like the wrists kind of. Yeah, it almost looks like a cast. Yeah. And just obviously leave the knuckles bare, but I think is that like a commission thing? Like you have to have a wrap. I th is f what I know is that that was optional in the beginning. Is it? Yeah. Because I, I know like uh, the state athletic commissions require some sort of wrap. Mm. So like often I don't like wraps, so I would just tie a little one one piece of thing and put it underneath the glove. I know a lot of guys also. There's a couple of guys that do the same thing. So maybe it's a commission thing that requires some sort maybe. of wrap. Maybe. Because they, they must fall under an athletic commission of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. It had to get sanctioned. Uh, uh, there's a whole, there's actually a whole documentary about how they got it right. And yeah. The whole battle. But for sure get a new CEO at BKFC. <laughs> for sure. Look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> or at least put that guy in the back office and get a new uh, yeah. face of that. Yeah. Let Rumble Johnson take over. Oh, that would be epic, eh? Damn straight. <laughs> um, Who are your other Africans? Uh, we had uh, Galore Bufando on that card as well in Bellator. He's a Congolese-born uh, London-based fighter. He also a UFC vet. He got a bit of a raw deal in the UFC, went one and one and then got uh, cut. Uh, he was in winning ways. And then in Glory, uh, for those of you guys who don't know Glory, Glory Kickboxing is the most elite kickboxing promotion in the world. We had Cedric, Cedric Jumbe uh, defeats... I don't know how to say this guy's name. Alim Nabiev for the title. He retained his glory title. But uh, yeah, there was a lot going on this weekend. In fact, eh? mm, it was. I mean, we haven't even touched on like the main stuff. Yeah. That was just Africans abroad, you know. So, I mean, we had Bellator and then like Bellator London, which was technically one card but two different yeah. uh, broadcasts. And then we had BKFC. We had Third Coast Grappling for the Jiu Jitsu guys, and then we had UFC. Greenville. Yeah, um, Greenville. So, yeah, it was a lot going. 
it was all happening. And there's a lot to come as well. Yeah, it seemed quite crazy because you like you looked at the UFC card and it was mm, it was okay, mm. and then you realized there was so much crap going on yeah, yeah. at the same time, especially the greatest combat sport event of the oh, year, BKFC. Do me a favor. <laughs> do me a favor. <laughs> the most highly anticipated fight in combat sports for the year. The crazy thing is, um, third coast grappling was probably the most stacked mm. jiu-jitsu event in history. It was literally just superstars the entire way down on the main card for like 16 fights. Um, so I think I, w I would say that that was probably the greatest jiu-jitsu event. That was that wasn't even as big as Bellator <laughs> this weekend, let alone the greatest combat sports event of, of the year. Uh, so did you watch Bellator? Bolton. Yeah, I, I watched. I didn't watch much of the prelims. Obviously, I watched France's fight. Yeah, they put a lot of car. They put a lot There's of a lot, on eh? them. Yes, There's a lot. Yes, yeah, you're in for like eight hours, like eight dedicated yeah, hours to get through that. Bro. It's a commitment. Yeah. So like we're going to London once. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna put everything we can into this one. Twenty five fights. <laughs> uh, I was pretty stoked to see Rafael Lovato Jr. take the Dude, title. Dude, what a what a crazy fight though as well. You know what I mean? Like it's it, for a guy like that to to understand that you're 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 really. In, I mean, and this happens in MMA all the time. You get the striker grappler sort of situation, yeah. and how the grappler is going to deal with the striking, and how the striking striker is going to deal with the grappler. That being said, Greg, Gegard Musasi is just, he's an all-round beast, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, Lovato Jr. just made it, at times made it look really easy on the ground, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it wasn't like he was completely dominating him, but he he was getting a takedown quite comfortably. There was, I, th I think it was in the first round, he did that, that like, leg grab trip, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, never. It's almost, like Musasi. A, it's almost like a knee pick yeah, with, yeah, like, yeah. the lineman yeah, 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 takedown. Exactly. Yeah. And it seemed so easy, you know what I mean? And I thought, like, okay, is Musashi, like, baiting him in here? Like, you know? And th there were some awesome exchanges on the ground. And I think he did such a good job of, of getting the fight to where he wanted it to yeah. negate the stand-up. <laughs> and even I mean? when he was on his back, you always felt yeah. that there was a chance, you know? Yeah. Um, but, like you always say, there's levels to this, you know? Sure. Like, Gagard Musashi is a good, good grappler, but you can't even, like, put him on the same page as yeah. Rafael Lovato when it comes to grappling. But, um... Yeah, it seems like Gegard Musasi is probably like one of the top five guys in the history of his division. Sure. But he's just a little bit off the pace when it comes to like the really good guys, you know. Um, he gets like a string going and then loses and a string going and then loses. and um, Yeah, I don't know. I also don't know about his camp. His camp, mm -hmm. he's got a predominantly kickboxing camp based out of Holland. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. There was also the return of Melvin Manhoof. Yeah, <laughs> I love that guy. I love that guy. Doesn't it, so a friend of mine yeah. um, in Holland, Remco, he used to teach him jiu-jitsu. And it was like, it was more just a tick box exercise for that oak. You yeah. know, you'd just pitch up and Remco, like after like six years of teaching him, <laughs> was still teaching him basics. You know, he had no interest in... Uh, in uh, doing yeah, jujitsu at all, he just wants to, to knock your fucking face. He just wants to, he wants to knock into new solar system. That's all he wants to do. Um, dude, that dude throws. I love watching some him fight. of the hardest kicks I've ever seen in she my life. Like it. It's like a baseball bat. No, it's ridiculous. It's crazy, bro. Do you ever remember that fight? I think these shorts. He looked like uh, the Black Barney Rubble or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's his traditional kickboxing uh, uh, outfit. Did you ever see his? Did you, do you remember his fight with Robbie Lawler? Mm -mm. Oh my goodness! He battered Ro Robbie Lawler something <laughs> chronic, right? Robbie couldn't even walk. It was round one. He couldn't even walk, right? But you know, Robbie's like super yeah. heavy-handed. So eventually, Melvin's getting like super excited, but he's got a very weak chin. <laughs> and then Robbie just, "Thank you for coming. See ya." And then Melvin's stiff, but everyone was so shocked that this happened because he was getting <laughs> absolutely murdered by this guy. Um, yeah, so that was, and the guy who's fighting was also heavy, heavy-handed. Yeah. So there was a bit of a risky fight for him. Um, and then Aaron Chalmers, Jordy Shaw. The guy keeps winning, so yeah, yeah, have to give him credit. Beating tomato cans. Look, I don't know anything about people that he's fighting. I'll be honest with you, most of the time. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, but from 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 what I'm hearing from the boys up that side of the world is that it's constant tomato cans. Oh, like he's designed to win, which is cool. Yeah. Like you know, like I, I showed my wife. I'm like, do you recognize this guy from? Jordy Shaw, she's like, I've never seen Jordy Shaw in my life. <laughs> that's Fair why I married enough. you. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. That's, but that's where he's from. And she's like, yeah, it makes sense, you know, because, I mean, the dude pulls in a crowd and that's, and it yeah. gets people interested in talking. Definitely. Props Especially on a London card, like, you yeah. have to have him there. Yeah. So he was on the London, he was on the Newcastle card and the London yeah, card. Yeah, that's Newcastle's, his, his hood. 
He's hurt. That's Geordie Shaw. That's where, that's where <laughs> it's at. He must have slayed afterwards. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And then um, main card of UFC, of Bellator 223 was Daily Silver. Mm. Silver, since the USADA era came in, Silver, <laughs> Silver's not even a fighter anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's just, he's just, he's nothing of what he used to be. The guy that was like murdering guys, doing weird backside kicks and uh, nah, I don't know. But he, he caught a bit of a hiding from daily. USADA will get you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere to hide. Yeah, and that was pretty much all the interesting stuff. Mm. Gallagher won, Ward won, Fabian, uh, Leon Edwards' brother, Fabian, Fabian Edwards, Edwards won. Yeah. He so. looked, th- dude, uh, take nothing away from Fabian Edwards. That dude he was fighting looked like he was in the wrong weight division. <laughs> was that just me? <laughs> uh, I didn't actually see the fight, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. No, but it literally looked like he was in the wrong weight division. But just too it small. Looked like, it looked like when Elvis in Guala Guala fought um, Mark Cumber. It just that's what it looked like it looked like it, uh, one more right hand was going to send him on to the other side of the uh, uh, those are the words cage. But, but some guys don't like cutting weight they refuse to cut weight fair enough yeah maybe or but maybe then you have to deal with that shit or some guys are just shark bait yeah yeah 100% <laughs> I mean they're definitely trying to build Fabian Edwards I no mean, for sure you heard nothing look at, take nothing look heard. it wasn't like it wasn't like it wasn't like <laughs> he was 20 foot taller than him or anything it just looked like he was not in the right weight division yeah that's the way it seemed to me there was no build up for that guy everything yeah. was about Fabian yeah. Edwards coming to that card yeah and I think that's what Bellator does that's a lot of their modus operandi is they, they build up stars like that it's yeah. good for them good for them and then did you watch any UFC UFC mm. I did I did I Very would, interesting, would have watched uh, a lot more last night but my daughter had other plans <laughs> <laughs> Moana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My boy Korean Zombie getting the job done, boy. Yeah, I was doing it was the damn epic, thing, eh? bro. That yeah, was dude. awesome. Can't count that dude out, eh? Never. If monster. you consider the fact that he was like, he had a whole career, then stopped the career for almost four years yeah. to go and do his national service and then come back and he was injured and a whole bunch of stuff. Now he's just kicked it off again. like Beast, bro. Yeah. And he I doesn't age. No, he doesn't. It's an Asian thing, but he just doesn't age. No, 100%. It's amazing. Well, is it, how old is he now? Like 33? 19. <laughs> 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 he's not nice <laughs> um, if yeah. only we had someone who could google that for us oh imagine <laughs> <laughs> he's holding in a yawn again <laughs> you know which was one of my favorite fights was uh, Dan Iger versus uh, Aguilar yeah, yeah I think they were the, the, the summit of the prelims yeah yeah what about that fight that kicked off the prelims Win versus dude that was mental. Uh, the DC's partner uh, from DC's gym, the short dude. I don't know if he's from DC's gym. Uh, the small black the, dude almost the, like pro- the problem is my view being a parent. Yeah. My viewing this weekend re- required me to watch it on a laptop with no sound on while my family watched family movies. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's a fight. So, so who, they, who they probably he, talked about fighting? it in the commentary, but I never. Heard yeah, it. it's, he's from he's from AKA. Yeah. Okay. Who I'm do pretty you sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Who did win fight at UFC Green? Was the was the first fight on, on on the card? Yeah, they kicked off the prelim card, eh? Yeah, yeah. I want to say uh, Sparsley. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was Sparsley. It was Sparsley. Yeah, but Sparsley is isn't Sparsley Sweden ba- Swedish Sweden based? No, he is. He's from Connie's team. Even Sparsley. Eric Spassi. Eric Spassi is what I meant to say, yeah. He's from Connie's team. The little Pudgy. Sure? Yeah, he's Pudgy. Yeah. Maybe. He was G- in the, he GB was in the MMA or something like that. He was, he was in the Ultimate Fighter yeah. recently. And he got cut and got called up last minute back into this yeah. fight. He's fighting out of Rhode Island. Yeah. Yet. Once again, just like Artem Lobo, I'm correct. I promise you he's at GB MMA. That, that also says, I mean, those things also say Garrison at FFM. Fair enough. But anyway, so he fought Eric Spicy. It was a great fight. It was, yeah. a, it was a great fight. It was fight. like a massive height distance that he had the gate. And he was, he got caught to the knee a couple of times while Spicy yeah. sent him back. Cracking fight. There were some cracking fights on that, on that card, to be honest. It was, it was one of those like sleeper cards that you, yeah. 
didn't really take too serious. Some look, good look fights. the problem is that there wasn't enough star power. Did to, you did to you see the people. nine second knockout by that beast? Yeah. I'm not even gonna try and second, say his name. Second fastest knockout yeah, in UFC from some nine seconds. Yeah. Was that, his, that was his debut, eh? Yeah, I think so. Scary. Absolute monster, bro. Rosario, Rosario, or something like some super weird name. From I'm guessing somewhere in. You Africa. know what the reality is? Is like like cards like that. You look at cards like this, and you hardly knew anyone on this yeah. card. Or you, you kind of know them, but you always know them as preliminary card fighters and so forth. And when I was doing some research for the show tonight. I saw an event where it had Kamara Usman and Francois Ngannou on the early prelims. <laughs> like, th- these two are like two of the best fighters in the world. When he was still world. the predator with the dreadlocks, with the yeah, 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 Francis yeah. Ngannou. Yeah. But I mean, I to have the current welterweight champion and one-time contender, yeah. current headliner, <laughs> on the early prelims. That's crazy. So it's, cra- it's fast if you think about like Francis Ngannou and, and Usman as well. How yeah. fast they rose yeah, like yeah. up that status. Because Francis Ngannou, I think I watched his debut like not not knowingly. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know who the hell he was. Yeah. And oh, I saw yeah, this dude it. walking in, and I was just like, Jesus, and he just he just bro. he just like lightly touched the like, dead. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. when he started getting that that thing where like no one wanted to even like yeah. get close to yeah, him like, touching. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm yeah, cool. done. Cool. That guy, that guy's going to 8-0 now. Who? The nine-second knockout guy. Was that his say his name. Say his name. I don't know. Where does it say he's from? Um, Can you see? Because I was, I was trying, like, I couldn't hear what they were saying. And was your father and you had to watch it with the sound off? Pretty much. It sounded very <laughs> soft. And then I, I saw the flag and I was like, it's definitely Africa. Possibly still under some other colony because I don't know where that's from. Isn't it like, wasn't it like, Cape Verde or something like that. Suriname. 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 Sure. That's intense. Not too many fighters out of Suriname, I'm guessing. Besides that absolute Paramaribo, beast. Sur- you know, you get a lot of Suriname, uh, Surinamese ba- uh, born oh, look, fighters that something. are <laughs> Dutch based. That are Dutch based. So I would, I would you'd probably find that he's a uh, I think I think it was I think he, he he did have a Dutch camp if I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, no, this, this actually keep your eyes on that dude is what I'm saying. This was actually his second fight in the UFC. He fought. Um, he fought uh, baby Junior Albini, the yeah. guy that puts the with pants. That, I think <laughs> with his nappy. Fuck! Someone sort that out. So yeah. Listen, UFC. If, if I was the UFC, I'd only give him spats. I'd be like. Yeah. I would tell him it's either that or you're no longer fighting here. You're killing me. <laughs> Well, do you remember when Dana gave um, Brian Ebersole a bonus for getting uh, 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 what it? Dennis Horman off TV because Dennis Horman came in the speedo <laughs> and no one caught him. He was already in the cage. And uh, he gave uh, Brian Ebersole a like, 50 grand bonus for getting him off TV fast. Because <laughs> you were so upset about that. It was, it was epic, bro. Whatever happened to Brian Ebersole? Who knows, bro? He was like head coach of Tiger Muay Thai in the UFC winning fights <laughs> and then cutting out arrows maybe, on his chest maybe he's got a kratom addiction in Thailand and he's just living the dream I think he's back in Australia funny <laughs> enough American and Australia um, did you ever watch the, him fight Martin uh, in Randburg in Walter Sisulu uh, yeah in Walter Sisulu Hall yeah I'm trying to remember was it I remember I was there when Adam Speechley fought Jeremy Smith yeah that, I remember that one that was in the in the ring yeah yeah. When that was epic because yeah. Adam took it on short notice and no one gave him a chance in hell to yeah. and, then and he, he almost he brought won that it. fight many a time he brought it eh? that was crazy man that was awesome that was uh, that was really cool because uh, I think Nathan Ross fought on that fight mm. he almost had his ear like punched off there was, it was like hanging by a piece <laughs> of thread it was I mental remember. there was a, one of the first fights on that card like a prelim sort of setup was supposed to be like a junior K1 fight so they had like K1 fights and then MMA fights yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> the first dude walks out, they still had shin guards on. Okay. That's what they had. They had shin guards, no headgear. Yeah. Shin guards in their gloves. And then his opponent walked in who literally looked like, someone told him that he was going ballroom dancing, <laughs> got into the <laughs> ring, went like white-faced, looked at his opponent 
as the ref came, he like turned to his coach and obviously said he doesn't want to do this. And he just <laughs> left. I was like, good on you, bro. Oh, you don't man. want to be in there. Because he literally, it looked like, like a junior flyweight versus yeah. like a middleweight. It yeah. just didn't. I was like, thank God. That's not happening. Dude, those <laughs> Just good, get out of there, bro. Those are good time. Wasn't that the fight card where Shaka got uh, knocked? Like, it was a K1 fight, and then I think Shaka got, uh, like, rocked. Yeah. And he didn't quite know where he was. And he kept trying to climb out the ring. Do you remember Very that? Possible. And Very he kept, possible. He kept, he kept trying to climb. We're talking many years ago. He kept ago trying now. to climb onto the judges' table. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? Get back in there. <laughs> that was still when Mahil uh, Opperman was a kickboxer. Yeah. There was there was some crazy shit going down there at that yeah, time, yeah. and there was some that fight with I, I wish we, that thing is on video. At Adam Speechy versus Jeremy Smith. It was epic. It's man. one of the craziest things I've ever seen because like I had mates that were, that were training with Adam, and Adam was at school with us, and and we were like, and you're like you know you know Jeremy was quite notorious, and we looked at this and we were just like Jesus, bro, this dude's a man. Yeah, bro, fuck, was, it was insane. I think he, I think he just he literally gasped from like carrying that weight. He was just yeah. like I can't do this. There anymore. were there were. There was a massive weight difference yeah. on the night. You could see it was just it was it was crazy, but um, yeah, those were good times. Paul man. the Force as well. Do you remember uh, Paulie? Paul was actually rolling with us the other day. Is at, it? Uh, four like four elements. It was awesome. Yeah. Do you remember? He's a little beast, bro. Rock was sleeping in that in that training session. <laughs> was he session holding in well. a yawn? Uh, <laughs> Before my time. <laughs> Yesterday, bro. Oh, <laughs> are you right? <laughs> yeah, are you right? I know I'm right. <laughs> 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 Welcome, bro. <laughs> that oak was a ledge. He, yeah. He, um, the OG. Yeah. Strong boxing base. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those were good times, bro. Those were good times. I remember my first fight was at Walters. Super. Was it? It was such a cool venue for amateur fighting. It's like fight star. All of these dudes. I don't, I don't understand why they're not there. Well, um, better than the, the, the fight the card I was on was like five fours, eight or nine. And it was Martin versus Leon, the first one. Jesus. That was such so a good, good fight, bro. I was, I was actually ch chatting to Martin. You can go watch it on YouTube. It's like in 124 <laughs> yeah, <P>. megabits <laughs> per day. So I get, there for, I get there for the fight. My first fight ever is 2010, I think. And uh, I get put in the same corner as CRT and a couple of other. Cecil, Cecil Boyd, I think. So I can't remember his name. Him and his crew were also there. I just remember like every oak that was going out before me was coming back fucking battered, like <laughs> pissing blood, blue eyes, just, and it was getting close. I, was, I think I was like fight number eight or something. I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way I park my car. I, I get there. I, I used to have this uh, Muay Thai coach uh, called Neat, and I was like, Neat, this isn't looking good, bro. <laughs> and he was like, no, no, you, you're a, you know, the, the normal bullshit you get yeah. before you fight. You're a warrior. This is your time. This is your... <laughs> I'm like, fuck, this doesn't feel like my time because <laughs> everyone in my corner is getting fucked up. And, um, my time to leave, bro. So, so I managed to get back unscathed with a win, but then like it just continued from there on. My corner just kept getting, getting battered. Maybe bro. you were the bad omen, bro. I was only okay one, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I th was Fran in my, was Francois Kunnabalt in my corner, in my change room that time? No, I don't Bro, I this think, so couldn't you remember Paul the Force no, being in the he gym fought, yesterday. He fought the oak from CRT, so he wasn't. I was 13 at that event, and we had just arrived, and Warren obviously was focused, but Neat's car broke down. <laughs> <laughs> I never met Neat in my life. He's just this very, very large... Very scary-looking Nigerian Muay Thai fighter. And then, like, Rock, Neat's car's broken down. <laughs> Go fix his car. <laughs> Go fix in his the car. Of <laughs> uh, I don't know how to fix a car. Yes, yeah. Those are good Bro, times. Bro, look, man. if you told me you fixed his car, I think I would have probably fallen off my chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I pushed his car. He's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good times. Fantastic. Should we take a look at the fight card this weekend? Fight week. We, we absolutely have to take a look at the fight card this weekend. I, I had an idea today. I think we should give our predictions hmm. on here. And then when we come back next week... Are you, 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 are, are you wait, upset wait, wait. because you got Artem wrong? <laughs> Is that what you do? Are you trying to redeem yourself? You now? have to drink a shot for every one you get incorrect. You mean a shot of child tea latte? Or? This <laughs> owns a bar. That's literally his job. And, and you can't con him into drinking ever. You know, I also had an idea today. I was like... Tonight I must take a bottle of whiskey upstairs and like Raw keeps forgetting about the Sophie. I keep forgetting about the whiskey. I think next show you need to remember that. When you walk in, you just say like just be like 
Okay, so, I, so I think we're going to do that. I think we, we're going to do predictions and we're going to drink whatever we're drunk. And never wrestle on a Tuesday again. You just you choose, <laughs> No, then you have to go to training at 8 <laughs> o'clock. 8 o'clock uh, gi training. Oh, I'm okay. Cool. Let's go through the card. We can give some main card predictions. I'm not going to predict the entire card. Oh, but no. Then you can land up drinking five shots. Come now. Boy, what do you want? You want to drink... Well, there's only four fights left on the card. <laughs> oh. A little bit of news. Couple of changes. Couple of changes. So, for those of you who don't know, Martin Beer and Asiashu Chitamba is off. Mm-hmm. Martin Beer is sick. That's, that's the word. Uh, he's got flu or something. He's not going to make it up. So, that fight's off. It's being moved to the next fight card, apparently. Because that's actually quite a nice fight. Yeah, it is a nice fight. Everyone loves to see Martin Beer. Yeah. He's a game and always brings it. And the other one was Mashaba. He's got a shoulder injury. Chitamba. I don't know. Mashaba. Mashaba. Yeah, he was scheduled to fight Jesse Fleming. Oh, so have, have, oh, Orlando. Is that, Orlando Mashaba. Has, has someone got a replay? Is, are they searching replay? Fights off. So we're down two fights. Correct. Yeah. That is not Cuck so fight. great. And <laughs> great for people that are going to be there. Ten fights is like a good time to be the at The problem event. is you're going to have that massive break in the interval. They should just start a little bit later. Maybe start at like 30 minutes later. Instead of a 5.30 start, do yeah. a six, 6 o'clock start. Yeah. Um, that makes the most sense in my yeah. mind, but what do I know? What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> like hey, so guy, look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> so See you at 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so the opening fight of the night is uh, Benjamin Mangala versus Warren Richards. So Warren came in, I think Warren started off with a win and then mm. he had a, he had a bit of a win. skid. Who did he beat in his debut? I can't remember. But it was like, was it, it, it was, I remember oh, it, it was, ending like I remember, quite dirty. Uh, no, no, I remember now. It was uh, Stefan De La Rey and then he hit him in the back of the head yes. off, went after yes. the fight was stopped. That's the one. I remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so both these fighters are one and two coming to this fight, so. Oh, then he caught Rudy Roots and yeah. the big afterwards. <laughs> so they were like, so what you did there? Yeah. <laughs> you definitely got punished. So what you did there? <laughs> <laughs> like, the Bra- like the Brave Fighters coming back to EFC. <laughs> I had someone <laughs> ask me about that today. They're like, how is Sylvester Chipum <laughs> on the prelims? And he's like, there must be a mistake. And I'm like, nope. No. This was from the beginning. He's like, I know, but he's worth more than the prelims. And I'm like, yeah, he also went to Brave. <laughs> There has to be some sort of repercussion, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't just jump ship and be like, I'm bad. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't exactly. always work, you know? Not the way you plan, anyway. <laughs> so how do you think that fight's going to go? Uh, Warren Richards. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with Warren Richards. I think he has a good amount of aggression, mm. fair amount of skills. He's quite athletic guy as well, eh? Yeah. He's in good shape. I'm not a fan of the ponytail, if I'm honest. But we'll... We'll let that oh, slide. he's got the whole Wolverine thing going. Mm. Mm. We'll let it slide. I'm gonna go. So we're all on the Warren Richards bandwagon on that one. Yeah. And just for those who are gonna be like, "Oh, you didn't choose me," it's got nothing to do with who we like and who we don't like. It's just, it's just us fucking around. It's the way we see it. <laughs> and listen, whatever we say, whatever Warren says, you can bet a thousand uh, rand per bet. He especially like the it. Artem uh, yeah, Paulie Mar- Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so don't even worry about better uh, what is it bet better bet better bet better way betway 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 correct sir betway Wolves. shout out to betway <laughs> <laughs> you can find it at betway.co.za this is not an ad then we've got straight uh, Tommy Stratum versus versus Dwayne Jones Tommy fought on the last card mm-hmm. did Dwayne also fight on the last card no previous card I don't think Dwayne Jones has fought in a long time no man Rourke's going to just know. So, so this is an Why inter- don't you just go to Tapology and go onto the page for EFC? So, <laughs> so this is an interesting one for me. Um, I don't know if you guys saw a little like, write-up with Dwayne Jones. Um, his manager got in touch with me. She was like, you know. Oh, you would know. You, you just put out an article. On no, but it's like, it's a weird thing because uh, w- when I look at Dwayne Jones' fight, he's obviously got a chin and not much else. If I'm honest, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like he, he stand up just seems so like 
sloppy uh. but he's but like that being said he's a young guy he's still learning a lot i feel like he was pushed up into the pro circuit too quickly so he's now learning things on his feet how you know deep was saying? his amateur career no uh, idea according to typology As, as an, an amateur. amateur yeah so one win three losses yeah, but yeah but that's to and then so got a topology pro license. agrees with me hmm? and then got a pro license yeah then you currently <laughs> own two you see like this is the problem right like surely you know i had a three and oh amateur record and i had to yeah. jump through a whole bunch of hoops to try and get a professional license right as at three and oh like three wins zero yeah. losses how does someone like how does someone with a one in three record get through the licensing oh, be yeah it's not always accurate but i mean like still the 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 ma uh, the federation's reference point would be topology or show dogs show dog mm. not so much on the amateur side but i mean topology would be your only real reliable source on that um so i don't know I, I think you also have to lay a bit of blame on whoever licensed them you know sure I mean, and like so so where i was getting to so th th there's that um <laughs> You know, I mean, okay, the guy does have a bit of stand-up ability. I don't want to say, like, he's a mummy. Um, we, we, we've seen Tommy Stratum, like, burst onto the scene. He's another guy who's, like, really stood out. You know what I mean? Again, Also like, no ground game, though. Again, yeah, but it's, like, it, it, it's in a way clutching at straws. You know what I mean? Because yeah. a guy's got, like, in his first or second fight gets a good KO. Like, we, we're barking because we don't have much to bark about, yeah. if we're honest, especially down below. Um, so, so guys like Rayo Sanchez and Tommy Stratum who have taken that opportunity, all props to them. Yeah. Shown off whatever skill set they have, they've really taken those opportunities and they've run with them. So automatically, when you look at Dwayne Jones, Tommy Stratum, you, it's on paper it's one sided. You yeah, like yeah. Tommy Stratum is the dude here, you know, because Definitely. he's also got a bit of this momentum behind him. Yeah. And people are talking about him. You know, he, he's one on one in MMA. Tommy's one on one in MMA, yeah. but he also did all those uh, last fight standing fights yeah. where he's got like yeah. wins over August Kainbala. Yeah. And a couple of decent fighters there. Yeah. So, and he's got a, a kickboxing background where he was a competitive kickboxer. So yeah. I mean, he's he's an experienced combat sports athlete. So definite, I think it's definitely on paper. Yeah. It's yeah. in Tommy's side. If you count the last five standing fights, he's three and two. Who did he? he who did Donny he? Swart, Leo Glass, and August Kainbale. Okay, listen. He also bought, he, Leo Glass. Let's remove that. Leo was way past his prime. You know, what I, I mean, like if we're honest, some, like. I saw some epic fights with Leo, though. Like know, when look, Leo back in the day is a different story. Stand but I think Arena. Yo. Did you ever go to a Stand Bank Arena fight? No, no, I don't think so. Leo boxed the face off this one. I can't, I can't remember who it was, but it was one of the best stand up uh, fights I'd, I'd seen at that stage. Obviously, yeah, I'm sure. still pretty new to it. But, um, but Joe, he de Leo definitely at this stage isn't really a talking point yep. at Shout this stage. Shout out to Leo Glass, anyway. Yeah, no, Beast. flipping legend, bro. In boxing, maybe. That would make sense. Definitely make sense. not in MMA. We hope so. Like the game has changed. You know what I mean? Like. But uh, you know, you know, I don't understand about some guys is that if you love striking so much, why not compete in striking? Yeah. And you don't have to even deal. I with wouldn't mind seeing your glass go have a little dab at boxing. Definitely yeah. not in MMA. I, I remember his son was having world. a good run at it for a while. I don't know. I don't yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean, that was good for him. But like Leo, if he wants to get his competitive juices flowing, I'd go straight to boxing. I yeah. wouldn't have to have to deal with all this grappling, head if you're kicks, not into and elbows. And yeah, I mean he's a good boxer. Why not yeah. box? Anyway, Tommy Stratum. <laughs> so Tommy Stratum, I think <laughs> we're all on the same one yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So you all go Tommy Stratum. I'm gonna yeah yeah. I'm gonna go Tommy Stratum. I just want to say like I think. I think you're going to see a different Dwayne Jones. The things he was saying, like he's... What has he changed? You know, well, not that, that he's changed. You know, he's evolving. He seems very serious. He said a lot of good things. When was um, his last fight, Brooke? Dwayne Jones. Uh, it was, was it not Roderick Kenner? 2018. How much can you August, evolve? August 2018, he lost to Anthony Mailer. Oh, Anthony Mailer, yeah, how can yeah. you? How much can you evolve in nine months, though? Yeah, I hear you, but like... I don't if know. there's such a big difference, just a, it's just the vibe I got. You know what I mean? Like no, he's, he's definitely been a bit more stressed, but I, yeah, I think he's got his hands full. I think he's definitely got his hands full. So Tommy straight him all around. Yeah, hundred percent. Sanchez versus Cassandra. So Rayo Sanchez versus Serge. Dirty Cassandra. 
Hey, he said it. <laughs> I didn't say you it. told me. <laughs> he got tagged in, bro. People tagged him and they were like, look what these are saying. <laughs> I saw him getting tagged in and they were like, listen, Serge, what they're saying about you. <laughs> so that's what Warren said about you. Just so you know. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm going to... I'm going to go with Rayo. I don't think it's going to be clear cut, to be honest. I think Serge Gassamba has been in there a few times. He knows what's happening. He knows how to bite when he needs to bite, as Warren would say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he knows when to throw an illegal knee. What a um, dick. But um, I, I, I like Rayo Sanchez. I like the I like the stuff he's doing. I like his fighting style. Yeah. He seems like, look, I'm, I'm not going to say he's the next superstar just yet, but um, I... I the, the, the fight against Bobo, he showed a lot of good things, and, he, and he's quite confident, and he's and he's very serious about what he's doing, and, and and I like the kid. I think he's I think he's good, man. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my boy Rayo. Yeah. I'll go with that one. Eh? Yeah. I so thought you were gonna say Serge Kassan. I was like, come on, bro. I'm a huge Serge. I know. <laughs> um. So the next one was meant to be Machado with Fleming, but that's off now. Yeah. So we've got Triple H versus Ivan Stradon. For me, that's a walkover for Jikasa, to be honest. Mm. To, or very one side again like I don't want to irrit- piss people off all due respect to Ivan Stratton I mean his last, last fight it looks like they literally dragged him out of the pub and thrown him in there well, what I don't understand right and obviously I don't know all the back the background to it but isn't Ivan from P I think so yes but he Originally. he does his last three weeks or something at Junkyard with Faddy you literally have Chris Bright on your doorstep like that would make the most sense. Maybe there's some beef there, bro. No, no, but you know, if you're gonna be a professional fighter and you know, you know, town like Port Elizabeth, where there's not a lot of high-level coaching, but you've been graced with one of the best coaches mm. in the country on your doorstep, should you go squash the beef and sort it out? If you're that serious about your career, yeah, you know, I don't. To be honest, I don't think Ivan Shredem is all that serious about his career. He has a he has a fight promotion. You guys yeah, know yeah, that. I do know about that. So I get the feeling that a lot of what he's doing is to... Is it that give chosen him, thing? Yeah, 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 give him the momentum, perhaps even the financial know-how or, or means to like really promote his fight promotion. I don't... Who did he fight in his last fight? I can't even remember. Um, it was a snooze fest, bro. Majumba. It was It was a snooze fest, bro. No, you guys are making Majumba. the same... It's the same mistake again. That's Tommy Stratham. Ivan Stratton the yeah. heavyweight. No, that's, that's right. Yeah, but there's a mistake on, on yeah. topology. He fought... It's like the same mistake they always do with Ruben yeah. and Martin. I can't, I can't remember exactly, but it was a snooze fest, man. He didn't look good at all. Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, he, I was just like... You know when you see a guy, you're like, oh, dude, I don't know how serious your training's been. And Jikasa's yeah. riding two wins. Jikasa's a monster, dude. Jikasa's another guy who frustrates me who should 100% be fighting a lot heavyweight. I think he walks around at like 103 or 102 but, but and he, he wears fights, an awesome helmet. He fights out of Mustang Athletic, mm. which I don't know much about, yeah. under a guy called Wayne Rahman, Rahman which I don't yeah, know yeah. much about. Do you think he just doesn't have access to the resources and know-how of doing Probably safe cuts? Probably just doesn't want to cut weight, bro. Look, I mean, that's not uncommon, but uh, I suppose he's got success at heavyweight so yeah. there's not much pushing him to drop down to light I like right? that dude a lot man he's so yeah he's a monster Simon Hall so called him out <laughs> may the force be with him bro may the force be with him that dude will will anyway so I think we're we all, we all on straight on there hey? yeah, we're all on uh, Jakasa <laughs> Jakasa Triple H we're all losing uh, we're all and we're all drinking hard <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absinthe. We're going to just put a bottle of absinthe there. Proper 12. Proper 12. Hey, call us. <laughs> call us. Hey, we'll, proper 12. We'll drink anything anyone sponsors. So put Fantastic. it that way. Uh, if anyone's got a bar out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, next up, Chifumbu versus Fafa Dwama. <laughs> That's, ridi- that That's very ridiculous. mismatched. 10 yeah. second knockout. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think, I think Chifumbu's going to just light this out cup. I'm a little bit worried for that kid, if I'm honest. The same, I get that anxiety the same way they told me when Elvis in Guala Guala was going to fight <laughs> at combat. middleweight. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's like a lightweight in the frame. Bro. Probably featherweight. Probably a featherweight. I think he fights a lightweight now. And he's like, yo, I'm just going to go up to middleweight and I'm going to come back. I'm like, bro, listen, this is, this is not like cricket. You're not going into the fast bowler's net to see how it's going. No. And then back to the spinners. Like they're going to, 
break your face. Well, people don't realize it, right? So, uh, I mean, we can just, we can, the, the simplest way of looking at it is if you do jiu-jitsu, right? And like a lot of higher level, mm. small guys will refuse to go with the very heavy white belts. But that's why Rock keeps telling me to die. <laughs> because at a certain point, it doesn't matter. Like if you have a little bit of knowledge and a lot of size or strength, yeah. Against someone that uh, maybe has a lot of knowledge but is not, is not the biggest, it, there's a certain point where it's just not it's, yeah, uh, it's not realistic yeah, anymore. Like, like there's po- there's times when you like athleticism can keep you going or stuff like that, but when you're completely mismatched in size, yeah, it's just and like you, but like and they give you Mark Cumber to start with. I mean, Mark Cumber's not GSP, but the dude carries some scary power at yeah, the middleweight. You know what I mean? It, like it's, I, I was just like. There's a reason camps... Who hates this kid? Why are they doing this to there are re- There's reasons why there's weight classes in yeah. combat sports and there's reasons why camps are built around weight classes. And look, Britt, that's what happened. First right hand, that kid folded, covered up into like a fetal position. I was yeah. like, oh, please don't yeah, let yeah. the ground and pound happen because well, there it's... That, there was that time that um, Elena Lungo was at the weighing area when uh, it's something, something Madiba and he completely missed weight by like uh, I don't know who you're talking about. But it was for like a featherweight fight. Yeah. He ended up fighting Elaine at last weight and Elaine was killed. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a no, bad I idea. No, remember, I, remember I remember that event. It, it uh, well, didn't he fight out of fight sports under Brennan Katz? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, very possible. So we're all with Chapumbo on that one, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, Chapumbo, if you, if you count his amateur career, he's 10 and 2. Yeah. Mental. And his losses are to Zulu Boy, hmm. and, and Abdul Hussein, in which, in fairness, he was honey dicked into that. Yeah, <laughs> like. Um, Thanks, brave. So, main event of the preliminary card is Devin Cronier, Guy Mugambi. No, they're not on the main not. card. Oh, has it been up? Yeah. Well done. So just well done, boys. Just to just to reiterate again what happens if you jump ship to brave yep. even if someone pulls out you still stay in the <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if Dino oh, versus Pete is going to be on the preliminary card <clears throat> what are you talking about bro? <laughs> I don't know anything about it. no they announced it on social media did they? did they? they said that Dino was in the office talking about fighting PT Cox uh, uh, didn't they? <laughs> no they did it was on Graham's thing okay <laughs> Yeah, it's probably going to uh, be a pre- no, no, no. But if you look at the fight card now on the website, it's got Petey Cox and verse Blank, who is now Dino, Dino Baggett according to Warren. Breaking news. Um, breaking news, people. <laughs> yeah. Or so if you watch Graham's post about five days ago, you'd also know that. But yeah. Can't watch them more. Right? Yeah, he looked quite good. You think he won? But, but, Conrad. Versus Dino, you're talking about two different worlds and striking. No, no, definitely. Yo, listen, you, you're getting you're getting sucked into a firefight, uh, you know. And, and look, fair enough, it, th- that was a big problem in Dino's career was he constantly got sucked into those firefights. But if you watch like his fight against Bruno Makulu, restrained, resisted, got the job done. You're not gonna. It's gonna be very hard to draw him into that firefight, and so anyway, P. Coxon survives that. Well, that, you know that, that the potential for that being in a fight is high, but. Fair enough. But I hope so. But PD also didn't go to Brave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the next. This is the next issue. Anyway. Okay, so Cronia Mugambia, I think. I this think is an Cron- interesting fight, to be honest. Guy Mugambi is he's one of those dudes, man, who doesn't go away. He keeps coming forward. He's super he hard. He fought to Bico, eh, yeah. in San City. He's super hard to put away. Yeah, I remember Lutando had a tough time, like. Dude, he's he just couldn't put him away. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like. You, you got to look at a guy like Devin Cunier when he's when he's facing that adversity of a guy that just keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, what he's going to do and how he's going to deal with that. I think Devin has all the skills to do it. But whether he can mentally deal with that, you know, if I, I think if he can't put him away, if Devin can't put Guy away in the first round, and it's gonna, you're going to have to choke that dude out. He's one of those dudes. Yeah, I, I, very unlikely he's going to get knocked out. Look, as I'm saying that, you know, I'm not, I do realize the risk of what I'm saying. But he's one of those guys who keeps coming forward, high guard, chin down, keeps But you're the oracle, you're the oracle. You called the Loba of Malin- Malinaji fight. The goat, boy. <laughs> Don't ever bet against the goat, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Devin's going to have to, I see Devin having to deal with some adversity, 
But I feel like he, he, he really needs to put that away in the first round. Not yeah. to say that he can't win a decision. I definitely think he can. But I think it's going to be a way easier night for him if he can get it done inside one. Because that second round is going to start to be more frustration. This dude keeps coming forward, keeps coming forward, keeps coming forward. Yeah. He's very good in the scramble. He's very good at, at, at uh, you know, like using that octagon space, the hexagon space really well, coming forward when he needs he's very to. very athletic. Uh, yeah, exactly. And he doesn't get tired. You know what I'm saying? Um, there has been, you know, you know, Devin, sometimes we worry about his cardio and stuff like that. But uh, I think he's definitely got the skill set. I think he's, people forget about how good Devin's wrestling is. He's got a really good wrestling base. His jiu-jitsu is coming on leaps and bounds. We, we see what he can do in the stand-up yeah. department. Well, two and two. He lost to Dan Shiel and then to Sylvester. But then got two decent wins with, uh, against TC Pusa and Wade Display. Who did yeah. Lutando fight? Well, that was a different... Uh, Brothers in Arms fighter. Uh, Gum, Gum from CRT. Yeah, CRT. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I still think Devin will get that one done. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, look, I think he will. I think you, I, I'm, I'm going to call a little rear naked choke there from Devin. I also think so. Um, the other thing to factor in is that if he's from CRT. Or a guillotine, actually. Without shitting on CRT, uh, that camp doesn't seem too in place at the moment. Yeah. I feel it, like whenever you see any sort of social media, it does feel like it's very light at the moment. Yeah. Like the guys that are training together is a, a core group of like five or six guys. Someone keeps someone keeps asking me on social media about um, the Makishi brother that's based out of CRT. Uh, like where he is? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't like think he's based out of CRT. Yeah, Yo, Devin did fight Latino Biko. Who did Latino Biko fight? Who did Latino Biko fight in Sun City? The same night that Alain Bordeaux had his life rearranged by Dolce. Was it not... Um, I'm going blank. Dude on the prelims now. Ponytail, Wolverine. Claude and Tumba? Claude and Tumba. Yeah, That's you, you, you're thinking of the, of the eagle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we're all going with Devon here, eh? Yeah. Okay. Saxon, Delafield, Marcel, Else. Again, sax bomb. Again, an interesting one. Okay, first let's clarify what is his new name. What is his current nickname? Is it the one minute monster or the sax bomb? It's the one minute sax bomb. The one minute sax bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't quite have a great ring to it. And it's gonna be. It's gonna need a big, a big banner. Yeah, to yeah. Fit that on. Yeah. Um, I, look, I used to train with Saxon. I know it's yeah. like I, I personally know what Saxon's capable of. And I definitely wouldn't bet against him. Yeah, I think he's, I think there's, like, like we discussed before his last fight, you know, obviously I spoke to him. He's, um, this new Saxon Delafield yeah. is, is a force to be reckoned with. He's got an obvious goal in mind. Um, I don't think anyone's going to stop him. I also think Marcel Elsie is a great practitioner. Um, you know, massive student of the game. I've seen him in, in his environment in HOT, you know, like he's, super committed he's always there he's helping the kids he's helping people he, he's always rolling you know he's, he's very committed um i don't think he has any business at lightweight for the most part i think featherweight is, is, is where he belongs i'm not quite sure if, what, if, if he has to beat what weight did he fight stephen de at? featherweight i'm pretty sure okay uh, else. Else. muscle else who did he fight? Did His he last fight. Uh, Nerik. Yeah, Nerik Samaj. Oh, Nerik, sorry. Uh, Nerik yeah. Be beat Nerik around one punches. Then Kabea Nisi before that. Also, no, no, no so, sorry, no. Yeah, right, full face. Right. I was, th I was thinking of the Pretoria card. So, like, uh, you know, a focus Saxon is very scary. Hundred percent, and Saxon's a big dude, bro. No, he's very. You big. know what I mean? Especially if you're like limping into lightweight. Cool, you don't have to cut weight and as much weight and stuff like that. Look, Marcel is Marcel is a very good jujitsu practitioner. I mean, he comes from JP Kruger's gym, so you know he's going to bring his stand up. I don't think it's going to be like this lopsided sort of Saxon Delafield all the way. Yeah, I just feel like the new Saxon Delafield is going to be too much for him to deal with. He's had a good camp as well. Yeah. He really is at a good camp. Yeah, dude. With a strong boxing base, yeah. which is what he needs, and a really strong jiu-jitsu program. So, sure. um, yeah, I, I, I definitely see Saxon getting that, that victory. Yeah, and they're both on a tear. Good fight. It's a good Very fight. Very good fight. Cool. But I'm going to go Saxon Delafield. Then you, we you said Marcel. 
cool. Did you say Marcel? Nah, yes, no, we got no, to, no, no, we no, got no, some no, variation. Rock said Marcel. I like Marcel, but I saw him math to me. He went Marcel. Oh, he did. Can I cancel both decisions? Then you definitely drink. No, you're in. But ah, okay. Okay. Then we have um, we have Luke versus Conrad. Oh, another interesting fight. You know, you know, this is what I was saying. Like the same, like PT. Conrad is so good at sucking people into that fire fight. I think he's so good. And I think if he can get that right, I think Luke's got a long night ahead of him. That are you used to go with Conrad? That being said... Uh, he did say Conrad, huh? He said that's Conrad. That's not what I said. He you said Conrad. Else, so. I didn't make you do anything, bro. Conrad. <laughs> I'll says Conrad. I didn't make I'll you pick Conrad. anything. What I'll I'm going to say is... Says there's, Conrad. There's obviously... We'll see <laughs> there's obviously going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Yoke's just setting me up. Yeah. There's obviously going to be a massive. I definitely said Luke. I um, definitely said Luke. War- Warren and Rock said Luke. <laughs> I'll anyway, say Conrad. I'm still going to go with Luke, and I'm going to say why. You know, there's going to be a massive discrepancy on the ground. The trick is going to be oh, for yeah. Luke yeah, to get sense. that fight to the ground, and I think everybody knows it. I think he knows it. I think Conrad knows that. Conrad, you're, you're not going to knock out, knock him out easily. Um, you need to have scary power in your hands. You need to have a very good striking ability to get that right. You need to, you know, it's not going to be a, a, a one-punch knockout. It has to be worked over time. And I just don't think that that's Luke's game. Yeah, I think Luke's game is very obvious. Um, he's very good at it. His, his top pressure is, is ridiculous. Yeah. And I think that's how he's going to get it done. Eventually, Conrad's going to make that mistake because he's going to be so worried about the takedown he's going to actually force himself into a mistake and it's going to end somewhere there. D- have you ever like watched Conrad strike you? It kind of feels like he wants to hit you, but he doesn't want to commit to hitting yeah. you. And he kind of like hangs in this like weird, he, he, weird the, range. Most people don't, don't see Don't get me wrong though. Yeah, he, he likes to sit on the back foot and like and, and encounter. He's, he's actually probably getting hit counter. by him. No, no, no. He hits, he hits hard as a truck, man. Yeah. And he can take a shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, 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 and that's the key detail there. I think, and like I say, he's so good at drawing you out into that firefight. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, like if, if if you see like from his from his hips down, he, he's a monster. Yeah. Like to to get your hands around somebody like that and try and pull them down to the ground is, is no easy task. So I think you, you you think about that a lot. You know, you're scared to engage because of his power. Um, he has heavy hips and all of these things you have got to deal with. He's very good at countering as you step into that into that sort of green zone. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, tough fight. Look, it's a tough fight. That's one of those fights that can quite easily go to the to the the, the cards. Um, from, I can't remember, so it's a legitimate yeah. question. How's Conrad's cardio historically? Not well against PT, it was good. I mean, that yeah. that, that fight went and it was a hard was that, paced was that fight. That's the night I fought last, uh, like a year ago. It was uh, 71, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, they beat the brakes off. So, so he, he I looked, didn't, I he didn't see really that fight because there. I was trying to find tampons to stick up my nose for a broken nose. He went, he went really well there. Who was his next fight? Was uh, the Russia? Max Merton knocked him out. Oh, yeah. Max Merton, he went the distance. Okay, but oh, he knocked him out in the third round. Oh, was no, he, he knocked him in the third round. I'm sure he yeah, knocked yeah. him out in the third Max round. Yeah. He went quite deep into the third round, quite comfortably, and then the Russia, which was the weird knockdown. His cardio is not bad. You see, I think everyone looks at his physique um, and thinks that he's... Yeah, I mean, that means that. I mean, look yeah. at DC. DC can go for... Look at yes. Roy Nelson, boy. <laughs> Hoy Nelson. Um, <laughs> I was actually speaking. I was speaking, <laughs> country. I was, I, see, I was speaking to someone at a party on Saturday, and uh, they, one of the foremost strength and conditioning guys for, M- for MMA at the moment, and he was telling me that the list of banned supplements that uh, Max got caught for it's a it's a bodybuilding stack, obviously. Hence his physique. Shock horror. No, no. But he says the problem with that stack was that it it. it drastically reduces your cardiovascular capacity so you're saying if you wasn't on the juice you would have beat conrad no i'm not saying that I'm <laughs> what i'm saying is that is that what an idiot bro he's obviously you have to be such a, my biggest fear ever of going into a fight is like gassing and not be and not having any energy to actually Listen, fight. i think max biggest concern was trying to get a maybe like a barge sponsor yeah <laughs> getting the right fit t-shirt oh yeah yeah oh, man. it's like hey barge I raise you one. <laughs> <laughs> that he was got, Max Merton. Oh, okay. He got caught by the basic sniff test, eh? Oh. No, no, he passed my sniff test for sure. Oh. 
Right. Okay, so we, so we went with Luke and you went with <laughs> no, Conrad. No, 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 no. <laughs> Look at me now. I said I'm going with Luke. I don't let these bastards fool you. Super tough fight, but I think Luke's skills will come out on top. It's going to no. be a great fight. That, that's that's a fight of the night in, right there, man. In any fight, like the first two minutes are very volatile and anything can happen in the first two sure. minutes. And like the whole thing about like, jiu-jitsu is like taking that volatility, creating some sort of like calmness in, in the exchange and then getting it to the ground and then executing your... And I think that's kind of like what Luke is going to be like in yeah. this fight. I think, he, I think as long as he can weather Co uh, Conrad's chaos yeah. in the first two minutes then I, I don't see it even and also close. the emotion I think holding that that, that that personalized animosity which we all enjoy um, sometimes for some fighters that can creep in because it makes you do things you wouldn't traditionally yeah. do you know what I mean and I think that's what Conrad is so good at he's so good at creating that animosity he doesn't hate anybody he's such a, he's actually such a good guy he's a really really nice guy and when I, I sat down with him did an interview with him a while ago such a good guy i mean he's he's got his heart's in the right place of what he wants to do to show the kids in mamalodi that there's hope out there and you can do things you want to do and like follow your dreams and, and that's his actual message but he's he knows what he needs to do and he's so good at drawing you into that animosity uh, you know really making it personal and and getting in your face because he wants to draw you into that you know yeah. what i mean he wants you to be emotional when you step in there because you think he's going to be but he's actually not he's it's all part of his plan it's actually part of his fight you know yeah so that that's the x factor but yeah I, I, it's going to be a cracking fight man it's it's going to be great i yeah. think that is that is that is one of the one of the better matchups we've seen this year and it's taken so long which has actually made it even more intense yeah so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm super pumped about that take one. A, cool. Take some bets on who's going to get fired tonight. I'm going to go Luke Michaels Conrad. Easy. I don't know. I th I would go with the main event. I think it's going to end up end up being fired tonight. Yeah. Because Brendan Brendan's so tough. Like, you know, like so he can take an absolute beating and still come back and yeah. and make some magic happen. So this is one of those funny things, and it was uh, and it was quite interesting to hear what Gareth had to say. You know, on how serious he's taking him. And I think that's that's a massive detail. I think Brendan Lazar has the ability to shock the world right now. Yeah. And I think he knows that. And he does I think it every he feels fight. and I think he feels he can do it. And to be honest, there's a side of me that, that really feels he can do it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Well the problem is he's proven everyone wrong exactly. every time. It's 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 a funny old sport this and I mean you can have, you know, like great stand up and great wrestling and great jujitsu. The things that Brendan Lazar has you can't teach. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's inherently in you. Yeah. Um, where's where's Gareth's more the clinical? Yeah. Uh, technician. I think I, I I see that fight. I see that fight going five rounds. I do see that happening. That's why I said that's definitely going to be five yeah. of the night. Yeah. I think that fight goes five rounds, and y you say Brennan. Oh, oh well, before we get to get to the, we missed the fight yeah yeah the tf2 fin finalists uh manon F uh Fiero versus many workers Hughes. so for the people that didn't watch the the fighter uh, manon comes from a kickboxing background yeah she's a french-based athlete and rock definitely f forgot his one job with the camera oh no the camera died that's okay let it go we'll use option b it's fine um so we're on option b already yeah okay um manon comes from a kickboxing background her coach is actually a, a very uh well respected coach in france uh, looks like he looks like he could be running drugs for he looks like he will kill you um <laughs> but um basically he helped the he french could be pablo escobar <laughs> just gonna throw that out there he helped the French amateur squad. I thought you were going to say the French army win the last war. He's scary, yeah? Huh? <laughs> yes. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu and... Uh, and he's a black belt and if you've seen kicking. if you've seen Manon striking, it'd also be like, yeah. fuck. It's a couple... They're also a couple. He flew out here for the fighter, proposed yeah. to her. She then beat the shit out of Connie, went back home in the finals of tf2 good so, week so after after everyone saw her fight she be instantly became the favorite to win that show oh yeah yeah after she fought becky yeah and gave her that kicked her face off in like the yeah. first 10 seconds yeah um i'm definitely going with manon in that yeah. fight yeah me too i think i think melanie's stand-up had 
a lot of holes in it. She comes Which from, is crazy because yeah. she's like 23 and 4 as a yeah. kickboxer, pro kickboxer. I think it's just... And her training partner is one of the top yeah. uh, female kickboxers in the world. I think it's just like her, 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 her approach maybe was a bit strange. I don't know. It just seemed like there was a few holes in, it, in her stand-up and it got exposed in the show. Um, she struggles to just get stuck in, I think. Yeah. Although that, that semi-final fight was epic with her and Kayla. Yeah. That was that was great to watch. She got she got pieced up. Uh, yeah, yeah. She got her pieced face, up. Her face. Uh, she got pieced up against. Look, and and and, and uh, Kayla Racho is a. Uh, her boxing was pretty pretty world class. You know what I mean? Um, but we've seen Manon stand up. <laughs> that that stand up is scary, ridiculous. Yeah. Those that front that front kick is that f- when she like rocks off onto that front kick, to cheap is good yeah, luck to it's you. Uh, Athletic yeah, as hell. And guys, don't look at their pro records because there, there's a lot of fights that happen outside of those pro records mm. between exhibition fights and amateur fights. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's cool. uh, they're two very highly skilled uh, athletes. So, so we're all going Manon on that one. Yeah. And then the main yeah. event of the evening. Which we touched on already. And I, so we just need to do the... Forecast. I like I like this fight. I'm very excited about this fight. I'm 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 happy to see Soldier Boy, um, in, in in a time when when the EFC really needs a star, like a big star. You know, um, mm. his star power. I mean, there's so much buzz about how full uh, Carnival City is going to be sold out. Like tickets are going to become this mad scramble. I mean, you know, it's going to be press identifying themselves. It's got like this big event feel about it. Yeah. You know? and that's mostly due to Soldier Boy. I mean, obviously, his dance partner, Ben Lazar, has a part to play in that. Um, it's going to be a crazy fight, man. I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped for it. Super, yeah. super pumped for it. Who are you going with? I'm going to go with Gareth. I'm going to go with Gareth. It's one of those, like... Raw? It's one of those, I know, like, you're, I know you're ruling life. What? Never bet against Brendan. Yeah. So you're going to Brendan. Yeah, dude, it's it's such a hard thing, you know, and I feel like I feel so bad picking anybody in this fight. To be honest, like, I'd I'd, I'd much rather stay neutral. Um, I think experience is will, will be the deciding factor. In my mind, I see that fight going mm-hmm. going five rounds, um, and 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 like maybe like a, a, the final round kind of wins it. And I think Gareth will have the experience and the know how on, on on how to accelerate and when mm-hmm. to accelerate to to just get that scorecard up, you know. That's the way I see it anyway. Yeah, it's like a weird one because on paper, you like, Gareth is clearly the favorite on paper. Yeah. But historically, you just statistically, Brennan's been the underdog every single yeah. time he's fought and has won every single time. I know it only says 2-0 and on his pro record, but all, Dude, the, yeah, but all the exhibition fights, f- when he fought physi- Short Dean and he just molly whopped that yeah. oak and then... Physically, he's, a, he's an absolute beast, bro. Yeah. He's an absolute athletic specimen yeah. you know what Don't I mean down for okay, so Rourke, I like it Rourke I is like Brennan Lazar I think I am going to go with Brendan on this one hmm. somebody gonna drink <laughs> I don't know who <laughs> well you chose Gareth and uh, Conrad so I mean going back to Conrad <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get Luke, Molly he said it, said it's not me. a certain breed of buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's oh, man. I'm, it, it's such a it's such a tough fight. Uh, again, it, it's it's going to be a great fight. Those last three, let's say even four fights: Saxon, Delafield, Marcel. It's, it's actually a really good card. Yeah, you nice. know what I mean. And there's there's a I'm lot not, of implications. I'm not, I'm not unhappy about the ten fights. Yeah, like I, I'm not like too sad about. I mean, yeah. I would have liked to see Martin fight. Martin to be a fight, but I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not unhappy about the I mean, You can parts. get home at like an adult yeah. time, you know? Like oh, w- is it an early live start again? Yeah. No, it's, it was we meant to start at 5.30. Yeah. The live, the live broadcast. Yeah, it'll be 8. 8. Super Sport. Those are the best, eh? Cool, guys. I think that's it for today. It's a bit of a long one, but it is fight week and it's a, it's a great Lots part. To talk so about. Lots to talk about. I only got to page two on my notes. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. Um, Watch uh, Dolce yep. make his UFC debut this weekend, and Francis Ngannou is back in action. Fantastic! We've got questions. Um, I, th- I think we're out of time. None of them are really got to do with EFC 80, so we'll just roll them over to the new show. Awesome. Um, yeah. 
cool just a quick one actually uh kirk bremer wanted to know and i think that's coming up you mentioned dolce he wanted to know what what do we think um dolce can do differently um to like improve as as, as, as a fighter for me obviously i i, I think um his stand up is evolving. I think he's shown that quite 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 a lot. I mean against Andrew Fanzel. Um I think he, he he just needs experience more than anything, to be honest. Carry on evolving in his stand up game. Um don't neglect the judo. It seems to work for him. Yeah. Perhaps a more submission based uh grappling style. Those are the things I, I I would be looking for. The scary thing is when you get when you get a fighter like Dolce to move away from what got him to the show, mm -hmm. it's a little bit dangerous. It's, it's when yeah. like when Nganu lost to Stipe and then tried to reinvent himself yeah. and then became someone no one wanted to watch, right? Sure. And he had to go back to being the old Francis to get back into popularity and to actually start getting back into mm. winning ways. So like a bit of a, a difficult one, you know? I think you can draw a lot of parallels to the Francis and Ghana story with Dolce. I think he needs to stick to what he's good at and keep refining those, those elements of his game. Cool. Sweet guys. We'll chat to you soon. Right. Ciao. Cheers.